For a long time, it was speculated whether Cappadonna was a member of the Wu-Tang Clan due to his involvement with the group. In 2014, the world got the answer to that question when Riza confirmed that Kappa had been an official member since 2007's Eight Diagrams album. In this video, we'll take a look into the life and career of Kappa Donna, Wu-Tang Clan's 10th and final official member. Kappa was born in 1968 under the name Darrow Hill in Brooklyn, New York. He grew up in Staten Island in the East Barracks projects of Park Hill. By the time he was a teenager in the 1980s, Staten Island was experiencing an increase in cocaine trafficking and crime. This coincided with a rise in the Jamaican gangster population on the island. According to Kappa in an interview with The Real Gully TV, he and his friends witnessed some of the Jamaicans getting rich quickly and buying flashy clothes, shoes and jewelry through money they had made through the crack cocaine trade. That influenced Kappa's image as an MC in later years. Due to its lucrative nature, the illicit drug trade attracted many young people as a means of making money. Kappa was no exception and by the time he was 15 years old, he was handling large amounts of cash, sometimes carrying around as much as $5,000 a day. As a teenager, he started to get involved in hip-hop and got a reputation amongst his peers as an ill MC. He participated in rap battles and freestyled as a hobby. However, his involvement in the drug game caught up to him and he served multiple jail sentences on and off, which by the end totaled roughly five years. While in prison, he continued to rap and got involved in battles against other inmates. On one occasion, while he was battling in prison, his opponent recited one of Kappa's own verses at him. Kappa recited the verse bar for bar and this convinced the opponent to confess to stealing the bars. He admitted that he had heard the rhymes on a tape in Queens, New York. He didn't know that he was battling the guy who had actually written the rhymes. This was before Kappa was a known MC and before he was part of the Wu, but that incident served as further validation of his skills as a rapper. It's also important to note that Kappa was friends with and knew some of the other guys who would later become members of the Wu-Tang Clan while they were still kids. In fact, Kappa was Yugod's mentor and helped him improve his rap and writing skills. During that time, Yugod also beatboxed for Kappa Donna. By the early 90s, Riza started assembling the Wu-Tang Clan with original nine members, which included Riza, Jizza, ODB, Inspector Deck, Ghostface, Raekwon, Method Man, Yu God, and Master Killer. And in 1993, the clan released the 36 Chambers album, which took them to stardom. Kappa was in jail at the time when all of this was happening. Once he was released and he saw that the music was a legitimate out for his colleagues, Kappa started to take the music more seriously. He took a job as a security guard and his big break as a rapper came in 1995 when he was featured on Raekwon's single, Ice Cream. After the release of the 36 Chambers album, the members of the clan started releasing solo albums. During the recording session for the song Ice Cream, which was to be released on Raekwon's solo album only built for Cuban links, Cappadonna jokingly mentioned to Riza that he should be on the song. To his surprise, Riza took him seriously and Kappa quickly wrote and recorded a verse. Method Man came in and added a hook and that song ended up being a successful single. Kappa appeared on two tracks on Ray's album but Ice Cream was his breakthrough performance since it helped to ingratiate him with Wu fans and gave him a lot of exposure. The following year in 1996, Ghostface released his debut album Iron Man. That project ended up being another seminal project for Cappadonna, who was heavily involved in it. He was featured on five tracks and had his name and picture built on the album cover alongside Raekwon and Ghost. That album, much like many of the early Wu solo albums, was kind of like an extension of the group projects in that the production was handled by Riza and all the clan members appeared on each solo album. That album stamped Cappadonna in hip-hop history because of his verse on Winter Wars, which many people consider one of the best verses of all time. Kappa mentioned that the verse started out as something he had been writing and developing over time. Then, when the chance to appear on Winter Wars arose, he finished up the bars, 
practiced, and recorded the verse in one take. It earned him a lot of respect and his fan base grew even further. His appearances on Ray and Ghost's projects boosted his status, and in 1997, he made his appearance on Wu-Tang's most commercially successful album, which is titled Wu-Tang Forever. He was the primary featured artist and even appeared on the lead single Triumph, which at the time was the most expensive rap video made. His impressive work secured him a solo record deal with RZA's Razor Sharp Records, and in 1998, he released his debut solo album which is titled The Pilage. It was a big commercial success and went gold after having sold more than 500,000 copies. The album didn't feature as much clan input as past Wu projects but it had some bangers, and my personal favorite from that project is Super Ninjas which features vocals from You God and Method Man. In the year 2000, Kappa appeared on the Wu-Tang album titled The W, but this time he wasn't listed as a featured artist, which caused fans to speculate even further whether he had become an official member of the clan. He released his second solo album in April 2001, but later that year when the group released Iron Flag, Kappa's presence was almost zero. He only appeared on one hidden track. This was because Kappa had disputes with the group about his solo manager, who had been accused of being a police informant. Kappa also had royalty issues with RZA, he felt like he was owed money that he had not been paid. So all of Kappa's parts were removed in post-production, that's to say that his verses were removed and his picture was removed from the album's cover art. In 2003, for a period of 8 months, Cappadonna lived on the street and drove a cab. This was partly sparked due to his finance related disagreements with his wife, who was also his manager at the time. In multiple interviews, he stated that living on the streets was intentional and was done as a way of stripping himself of material items and testing the love and loyalty of the people around him. Later, he reconciled with his wife and returned home, and by 2004, he had reconciled with the Wu-Tang Clan at the Rock the Bells festival. He appeared on the 2007 Clan album titled 8 Diagrams, which was the first appearance as an official member of the crew. The official Clan status was confirmed by Reza in 2014, where he said, Cap has been an official member of Wu-Tang since 8 Diagrams, yo. And in the early days, if you know our history, you know what I'm saying? You know some of us wasn't here you know physically present when this Wu-Tang thing popped off. Some of us was on iron vacations as we like to call it. Capadon has always been a pioneer MC from our neighborhood that had that Wu-Tang spirit in him. Know what I'm saying? Peace bomb bomb. Hi. <laughs> in the 2010s, Capadonna continued to release more music. He also partook in various ventures such as partnering up with Outbreak Boards to release the Killer B branded skateboards. That was around 2013. He went on to release more solo albums between 2010 and 2019 and he contributed to the next three clan projects. As of March 2021, Kappa has released 13 solo albums which as at the time that this video was recorded, made him and Ghostface tied for the most solo albums of the clan. Cappadonna's most commercially successful album is and remains his debut album The Pilage which has mixed reviews among fans. Some love it, some hate it, and some think it's just okay. Whatever the case, Cappadonna has had a successful music career as part of the clan and as a soloist, and his legacy in hip-hop has been cemented thoroughly. If you enjoyed this video about Cappadonna, then you might enjoy my video series on the Wu-Tang Clan. On your screen, you should see one or two videos. Click on them if you're interested in more Wu-Tang related content and don't forget to subscribe to the channel for more hip hop videos. If you want to support this channel, click the Patreon link in the description so you can help me grow the channel and have input on some of the topics I cover here. Thanks for watching and see you in the next one.